Okay, now we're ready, everybody. Sorry about that. We had a little confusion here this morning. Um, all right, so uh, Jennifer, if you could hit star six on your phone, we'll unmute you so we can hear you. Star six. Hello. Hey, there we go. All right, uh, Jennifer. Okay, so everybody, today we are very fortunate from our Southwest office to have Jennifer Weinberg. Jennifer, welcome. How are you this fine Hi, and glorious day? <laughs> I'm good. How are you? Yeah. Good, thanks. Yeah, sorry about the confusion. It's, uh, we do, I do a podcast and a Facebook Live, and I figured that this time we would do the podcast. And um, so, sorry about the confusion, but so we're in the same office, everybody. <laughs> but we, you know, because of the way it records, Jennifer, that's why I have to be over here. Otherwise, then we do Feedback City, and it comes in a lot better if we're not on speaker yeah. phones and on, on our own line. Because remember, uh, this is the podcast that I send out. It goes on my Apple it goes on the podcast app. It goes on my YouTube channel. So we get it out all over. And we always have a few people that show up live still. Fortunately, we have a few people that still show up live. So let's get started. Tell everybody a little about yourself, how long you've been doing this, and all that good stuff, please. Uh, I've been with the company off and on almost 25 years, and I'm the business broker for the company. And I just right. wanted to come today and um, talk about the strength of our company. I don't know if people realize really, um, you know, what, what people come out of the company, positions they've held, and, um, you know, the power of Berkshire Hathaway. I love it. I love it. So start with, um, yeah, with your list. Give us an idea of who you're talking about, because I know you, you sent me over a few. And, you know, I know we have a lot of – I just went to um, the Women's Council um, – Realtor, a woman's council of realtors where we had four women finish in the top, top, um, you know, 25. Top 25 it was really interesting. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, there was Jennifer Minucci, there was Yvonne Angarola, there was Rochelle Vinoy, and there was one other, who was it? Oh, yeah, um, Miriam Kukachuru. If I say if I'm yeah. saying that right, incredible <laughs> women, incredible women. I mean, that's that's huge. Oh. I, I I was top 25 a few years ago, and it's it's a very cool thing. So congratulations, yes. yeah, to all four women for sure. Yeah, it was a great night, and um, and I know that you, um, yeah, you've been involved with the company. You've so give us a little idea of some of the stuff that you've done. It'd be great to hear it, and the other people that you want to mention as well. It'd be wonderful. Yeah, I just um, you know I don't know if the, if it, a lot of people at the company realize you know what we have going on over here, but you know we had Aldo. Um, he was LVR president a couple years ago. We have mm -hmm. um, Katie that's come out into the political arena. We've got Forrest that uh, now is our commissioner. And uh, we've had so many agents. I mean, with me being with the company since 2000, I've seen so many uh, agents that started out as agents come through and are now, you know, huge brokers um, mm -hmm. also. So, you know, just I think is a, is a testament to our company of, you know, the power of, of what you can be if you put your mind to it, you know. Um, mm -hmm. For us, for, for me personally, I mean, we've got Josh Campa coming in as LVR president. I've, I'm coming in as president for CALV. Um, and for people that don't know maybe what CALV is, when you go to LVR and you sign up to be a realtor, you get two choices. You can belong to the MLS or you can belong to CALV, which is Commercial Alliance of Las Vegas. So obviously most people will choose MLS as their residential agents, but if you're not doing a lot of residential or you do both, then you become a CALV member. And I'm going to, I was president-elect um, behind Chris McGarry, who everybody knows the company mm -hmm. as well. So he is our, our, our current sitting president. Um, so I'm following him, which is, um, which is huge. And thank God he's been around to kind of show me the ropes. So yeah, we've got a mm -hmm. lot of talent coming out of the, co out of the company. So yeah, I'm so glad you wanted to take that that uh, angle today because I agree with you 100%. I mean, you know, um, we have a, we have a lot of uh, really talented people here too. We're a good sized company, but we still have a little, you know, those small town values. I would say small company values as well. And uh, you know, like uh, for instance, you mentioned Haiti. Haiti. I mean, she was she was the board president, the state president, and now she's a is it is a selectman? I think is what yep. she is for the. Um, Yes, it, actually, my district, where I live in Summerlin. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. That's kind of interesting, where she has a lot of input. Well. That's the other thing too. You know, with our, with our, you know, and I know that, you know, lately the scope for NAR has been a little crazy, but um, you know, we're the second largest trade organization 
in the country. So when it comes to elections, we have a lot of pull as well as a as a group. Absolutely, absolutely. We have a great name uh, out there, and you know some powerful players as well. So it's it's been a delight to be at the company, and um, and we can get into this whenever you want to. But I also also brought some excuse me brought some stats today. Being that I'm only a business broker at the company, I thought uh, maybe we could share some stats of what's been happening, you know, in the business world also, just to let people know. And um, you know, I do. That'd be great. Let's hear it. Southwest office, yeah. So, so I pulled some stats. Um, we get most of our things from a uh, from a website called Biz by Sell, which is owned by CoStar. And uh, actually, on on the commercial side, we get all of our stats from CoStar. Okay, just to see what's going on, kind of like, you know, what we do with the residential market, how many houses have sold, you know, blah, blah, blah. So here are some business stats that I found interesting that I thought I would share with you guys. Um, so mm-hmm. this is United States as a whole. United States, um, these stats just came out, 22,384 businesses changed hands, representing $1.8 billion. Uh, which is higher than last year. So we are trending up, which is very good. Um, Some of the businesses that they honed in on, for example, uh, they talked about profitable restaurants. So buyers are actually paying a premium of 9% uh, for profitable restaurants. Let's see what else I got, uh, which I thought was interesting. I, I do a lot of business acquisition, a lot of restaurant acquisitions. That's probably, of all the deals I do, that's probably the thing I sell the most of. And they change hands, you know, pretty often. I would say I probably have anywhere from five to eight restaurant listings at all times. Uh, so that sounds wow. pretty accurate. Mm-hmm. And then we've got, so 70% of all small business owners say inflation is not easing with labor costs and rent. So what's happening basically is, you you know, everyone, you know, gets upset because your favorite local ice cream store, your favorite hamburger place now has gone up in price, right? Well, they want to blame the small business owner and, and, and the greed and all these things. But if you think about it, it's literally a pecking order. You've got starts with your landlord, your landlord, your rent's gone up. I mean, commercially, if you look at rents around the valley, the new places, four bucks a square foot plus cams, you're looking at five bucks a square foot. So starting with the greed of the landlord, that's where all these problems in my own, and this is only in my opinion, starts. Okay, so you've got the landlord that wants like five bucks a square foot, so that's a problem. Then you've got um, inflation, you've got labor costs that have gone up. So all of these things are now playing a part into small business, uh, um, you know, small businesses. Mm-hmm. So it's it's very difficult for a small business owner if they don't have more than one location to make it these days. Great. So um, then I've got, this is interesting. So financing, um, buyers, this is their stats. Buyers are adapting to new interest rates um, and 27% of more sellers are open to financing compared to last year. So basically, you know, business owners, as far as selling their businesses, are opening up to the idea of holding back a note. Because when Mm -hmm. you do financing on a business acquisition, you have three choices, right? You can pay cash, you can get an SBA loan, or you've got to get that seller to hold back a note. So that's good news for our industry that the numbers of seller carry back notes have gone up. So that's, that's good. Um, nice. You've got this. This one was interesting, Rick. Thirty-five percent of business owners now use AI technology. Wow. Out of the thirty-five percent that they polled, um, the seventy-one percent of the thirty-five percent said it helped in their business through marketing. So mm-hmm. that's that's definitely a trend going in that direction for sure. Um, retail wow. businesses. Yeah, retail businesses have grown 7%, but that's after two consecutive quarters of declining numbers. So we, the retail sector has really gone through a major correction. I think um, COVID, uh, Amazon, you know, all your online, it's, it's really kind of, you know, come full circle at this point and, and has definitely done some corrections in the market. And then a couple Mm. more stats. Uh, We've got our service businesses. Um, They're experiencing moderate growth, but they've had some 
business and we have manufacturing sector. Um, the manufacturing sector has actually closed 11% higher than last year with strong growth in manufacturing. Nice. And um, moving forward, it looks like 2024, uh, the market will, uh, has really overlooked and has been able to, uh, to um, show the ability to tolerate higher interest rates. And unemployment is relatively low. So it's a good market right now. We've had an influx of buyers from, for myself and my team. And I have a team of eight agents. And we're just so busy uh, with all the people moving to Las Vegas. So I really wanted to kind of share those with you. I know we don't you know, get a lot of staff as far as what's going on business-wise. So I definitely wanted to share that with the company. I thought those were pretty interesting. That's great. Yeah. So that's great. And you mentioned inflation and you mentioned wages going up but not matching that's all. That's all really important stuff. Like, I, I got to imagine. I'm just going to guess here, and I'm going to say that uh, because of uh, California ra raising their minimum wage to twenty dollars an hour, I, that's going to wreak havoc on some of those businesses, and hopefully, some of them They're will want to relo relocate here to Vegas. They're all leaving. All oh, there's. A, I don't have the percentage, but I, I saw it. I caught it on the news. Um, there's. It, all of them are going out of business. They're not staying in California yeah. at all, not, not even to sell their business. They're literally closing their doors and leaving. Isn't that crazy? It's so crazy, you know. It's crazy to me. But wow, California is a tough well, place it, be, to be a business owner, you know. It really is. It's be, That's why a lot of people I, – I mean, I, I can understand – the altruistic part about raising the minimum wage, but to put it out – because a lot of the people that do the minimum wage are – you know, people that don't go to high school or college or, you know, they're not running families, a lot of them. They're, you know, just getting a part-time job at Arby's or McDonald's or wherever. Uh, but it's really, um, to me, I can understand that they want to raise minimum wage, but to make it at a, at a point where it's actually out of the reach for businesses to operate just seems a little excessive. Exactly, and that's that's the point of that small business owners don't understand. You know, these are these are not you know these are kids, right? They're 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 just making their way through school. These aren't like permanent positions, right? You're not going to go work at a McDonald's, you know, flipping burgers your whole life. I mean, that's the intent, of course. So, you know, and that's what that's the push and pull between you know what's going on. You know, this push for higher higher um, wages, but then the business owner, you know, it, it really isn't warranted. And what's happening then, you know, so these people are, you know, they're getting their way, 20 bucks an hour, and then your burger is going up to 15 to, you know, you, you go into McDonald's now and you get a burger, fries, and a shake or a soda, you're going to pay $15. So people right. are complaining, but, you know, everything has to be put, has to be pushed on to the client, you know, it, or right. to the customer at some point. I mean, to help alleviate some of these costs, the landlord who wants five bucks an hour, I mean, you know, I mean, a 15, or a, I'm sorry, you know, rent at $5 a square foot. You've got your employees that want 20 bucks an hour and you're the small business right. owner and you, you're, you know, it's your blood, sweat and tears. You're there every day and you're making 50 grand a year for all, for putting up with all of that, you know? So it, it's, mm -hmm. it's tough right now out there. That's for sure. That's for sure. Yeah, for the small business owner, but that's why a lot of them are moving here too, because it makes a lot of sense to uh, run a business here versus there. Have you ever? Because you've been doing this a long time, like you said, twenty-five years. Have you ever seen um, an increase of inflation in wages as fast as the last few years? Well, I mean, well, I I just I had Dairy Queens in town, which most people know, but I I sold them. This is well, this November will be three years. And when I owned my Dairy Queens, that's when the first minimum wage law went into effect. So it started out mm -hmm. at, I don't remember, it was like $9. And it's like now, you know, I think minimum wage has gone up to 12, you know, through the years. Like you got hit every year for it. Um, so mm -hmm. I started feeling that pinch, you know, with the land. That's actually one of the reasons I sold my, my two Dairy Queens is because, you know, the pinch from the landlord, the pinch from the employees and, for what you know i mean it's it's right. so much work to own to deal with the employees they don't show up they you know they need this right. they need this. a lot of work it's a lot of work so and let's mention jennifer dairy queen 
another Berkshire Hathaway company. <laughs> I, it's not funny. And you know what's funny about that? Yeah, when sure I bought is. my first one six years ago, <laughs> I did not know that war, it was a Warren Buffett company. So when I bought it, someone said to me, oh, you just really love Berkshire Hathaway. I'm like, what do you mean? So I actually bought my first Dairy Queen not even knowing that, she, <laughs> that he had owned yeah. them that I found out real quick. Yes. So I must be attracted yeah, I, I to the brand. <laughs> right. Yeah, insurance companies, um, Dairy Queen. I mean, there's all kinds of different furniture companies, obviously, mostly energy, I mean, but and real estate. And, and they're all owned within the Berkshire Hathaway family, which is great, I think. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah. yeah, you know, so I, I just, I'm noticing that that pinch is uh, starting. But even like like you just said, in, in, in Nevada, it's $12. That I can understand, even though... You know, some people would probably argue that's still that's still high, but to go to twenty dollars, uh, like overnight, mm-hmm. I mean, I don't understand how they think that. Uh, well, it goes back to politics are usually not run by people who have run businesses because they would be run a little different if uh, if they were. <laughs> that's that's what I'm not getting into a political bout or anything like that at all. But I always said that about the United States of America. Like through the years, if you want to become president of the United States of America, I believe it should be a prerequisite that you've had to have been and owned a a business, a profitable, successful business, not a political Mm -hmm. career, never owning a business. Because at the end of the day, United States of America, it's a business. It's a big business. It's 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 a big business. But you know what? Why are they putting people in without a prerequisite of owning a business prior to? It's the crazy. Mm -hmm. To me, it seems crazy, but what do I know? And and I also think the longer you're in politics, the more you accept that, unlike a checkbook, a checkbook needs to balance, (laughs) right? Like in a business, you got to balance. You got the government doesn't seem to understand that concept, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah, 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 for sure. So, right. yeah, it's been interesting but, for, for me and my team. And, um, you know, it, 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 lending has been interesting. It, it's, it's funny. It's like they say that there's no money, but there is money, but there isn't money. But they're very, very, very picky. I found I have three, mm-hmm. I'm waiting on three SBA approvals right now, three different deals. And every one of them is unique. And every one of them has been taking forever. Like they're just very slow, slow to lend, very picky to lend. Um, so that has definitely held us back for sure in our industry. It's been a, it's been tough, but at least they're still lending. You know, I remember years ago or in COVID, they weren't lending at all. So um, and businesses have really come back from COVID. So now when I'm asking for three years financials, I'm not having to, you know, make an accommodation for, 19 and 20 and you know some of 21 um so it's it's been nice you know to have see these companies kind of start flourishing again and pop you know coming back from from the covid you know post pandemic mm-hmm. so it's been it's been nice to see and those you're talking about the small business administration approvals right yeah mm-hmm, that and just businesses just businesses a lot you know generally speaking because you know after covid i was getting all kinds of calls because people weren't making it they weren't paying you know being able to pay their bills and they're you know they were wanting to sell their businesses they couldn't they couldn't afford them anymore um but i'll tell you what businesses did flourish during covid were all the restaurants i mean my dairy my dairy queens went up 20 percent why well right. because we were essential and Mm-hmm. You know, even though it took them 30 minutes to get through the drive through they wanted an ice cream, you know. So, actually, our business mm-hmm. went up overall. I think all restaurants did, you know, because it was, I think, the only thing that yeah. made people feel normal at that point. So, just going right. back and, you know. Yeah, and then when they first opened, you could only you could only have a certain amount of people inside. And at, at one point, you're right, it was only the drive through yeah, we, we didn't even have our doors open unless the COVID, we, we just brought, you know, at one of my locations, we had, um, we didn't have a drive through we just walked it out to them, and then my other location, we shut the door and drive through only, so it kind of worked out, mm-hmm. it kind of worked out. Yeah. But I, I want to talk about education a little bit, Rick, if that's okay. Um, okay. I feel like, especially being here at this company, it's, education is super important, and the more you know, the better, right? Even if it's not your wheelhouse, you know, it's good to know different aspects of all, you know, real estate, of all what's going on with businesses and things like that. So, 
I just kind of want to recircle to me coming in as president for CALV, and I just want to tell everyone, my, you know, someone asked me, what is your goal? What is your goal coming in as president? And my answer to that is education. So to all of, you know, everyone that's listening and all of our residential agents that are at the company, I just want to tell you that on the commercial side, we don't have a lot of education, right? Um, and that is going to be my main goal. And I wanted to bring some sh subjects to everyone that, you know, even if you do residential, that you want to come and learn something new. So that's going to be what I'm going to focus on. I did a uh, business broker 101 class in, Oct um, I'm sorry, what month is it? like a month ago at LVR. I got it approved at the real estate division and uh, did my first class. We had over 100 people show up, and it was excellent. It was such a great class. I've been asked to do it again um, this October. And personally, myself, I'm writing another business broker course, 102, and I'm doing some commercial classes. So we have a whole education um, division now um, on, at CALV. And we're going to be bringing in some really, really cool classes. So if anyone ever needs live CE and they don't want to go to the same class all the time, you know, I would definitely remind everyone to keep an eye on CALV.org, or you can see it through LVR, of course, if you go to education. But we're going to be bringing some really, really cool classes um, to everyone. So I would say watch for that. That's cool. Yeah. That sounds great. That sounds great. Awesome, awesome. Okay. Well, all right. So just because we just have a few minutes left here, give them, um, if I want to get involved in what you're doing, um, what are the three most important things you would tell them to consider, even though I know that's, there's a lot involved with business brokers. Just give them an idea. <laughs> you can, yeah, well, first you'd have to pass through Forest. So good luck with that. Let's put that out there as number one. <laughs> okay. The gauntlet. Um, <laughs> Forest is very, you know, and, and I understand. Like, you know, there, what I do is very is very specialized and you have to have a permit on your license to do what I do. So, you know, as I always say, and, and as I always say it all the time, stay in your lane, you know, stay in your lane. Don't try to do what I want to do. But if you do want to try, you know, I mean, if you have any questions, of course, I'm always available to any agent to answer a question. But um, so I would definitely stay in your lane. That would be my first advice. Um, and, um, but, you know, I am the business broker at the company. We, I do pay the highest referral fee. We do pay, um, we do take high percentages, you know, on our listings. I would say definitely try to get the lead, you know, as, as a residential agent, because remember, they, you're the first stop. They call every, they'll, they'll call you, where's the best uh, Italian restaurant? I need a plumber. They call for everything. So if you get that lead or maybe you're taking a, a listing and it's a divorce situation, um, they just need an evaluation on the business, you know, I can piecemeal it. I can list their business, whatever, you know, anyone needs help with, I'm happy to help. Or a lot of agents at the company will do assisted living, uh, but they can't list the business inside, but they can do the real estate. Call me. Happy to help. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Well, I really appreciate you taking your time out today. Um, Thank you for having me, Rick. Oh, my pleasure. And sorry about the confusion up front. Oh, no, that's okay. No worries. So send your referrals to Jennifer, anything to do with businesses, and you're right here at the company, too, so it makes perfect sense to do that. We're going to plug this um, podcast out to everybody, so they're all here. Do you want to give them maybe your phone number, your direct line, if you could? Yeah, absolutely. My private cell number is 702-326. One zero five five. Awesome. Well, thank you very much. I really appreciate you taking your time out, Jennifer. We'll do this again in the near future or maybe the Facebook Live. And I just I really appreciate you taking your time out today. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rick. Have a great day. All right. You too. Okay. Thanks. Bye.